A reading from the letter of Paul to the Colossians, chapter 3, verses 12 to 17. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you are called in the one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom, and with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. My life flows on in endless song, above earth's lamentation. I hear the sweet, though far-off hymn, that hails a new creation. 
Through all the tumult and the strife, I hear the music ringing. It finds an echo in my soul. How can I keep from singing? What though my joys and comforts die, the Lord my Saviour liveth, that though the darkness gather round, songs in the night he giveth. No storm can shake my inmost calm, while to that refuge clinging, since Christ is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? I lift my eyes, the cloud grows thin, I see the blue above it, and day by day this pathway smooths, since first I learned to love it. The peace of Christ makes fresh my heart, a fountain ever springing. All things are mine, since I am his. How can I keep from singing?
O God of all creation, we give you thanks that we are able to worship you without fear, that angel songs sustain our praises and make the saddest heart to sing. We offer you our thanks for the gift of music through which, far beyond words, we can feel our way towards the greater mysteries. For voice and instrument, for choirs and loud organs, telling forth your glory, and for solo voices proclaiming your truth. For the creativity which places each note in its ordained place of pitch and measure, building harmony across staves and melodies which gladden the ear. O Lord, may our music be in the service of worship and in praise of your name, lifting up the hearts of your faithful people, that it be not an end in itself, but a gateway to your eternal kingdom and a movement towards that heavenly music which sustains the spheres in their motions and orders your creation from its beginning to its end. Amen. With one heart and mind, and with all our strength, we give you praise, O God. With joyful lips and happy spirits, we give you praise, O God. With every word spoken or sung, we give you praise, O God. With every tear and every sound of laughter, we give you praise, O God. With our memories and with our hopes for the future, we give you praise, O God. With every end and every new beginning, we give you praise, O God. Your love defies all knowledge, your mercy overcomes all sorrow, and through the power of your resurrection, you are making all things new. Through your grace, we know that the wilderness and the dry land shall rejoice. The desert shall blossom and burst into song. You give us voice to sing your praise, and we sing as travellers singing along the road. So we pray and give thanks for all choristers and choirs, and all who sing and make music in your name. Bless, O Lord, us, thy servants, who minister in thy temple. Grant that what we sing with our lips, we may believe in our hearts, and what we believe in our hearts, we may show forth in our lives, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
A reading from the book Revelation, chapter 5. Then I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll with writing on both sides and sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming in a loud voice, Who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll? But no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth could open the scroll or even look inside it. I wept and wept because no one was found who was worthy to open the scroll or look inside. Then one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and its seven seals. Then I saw a lamb, looking as if it had been slain, standing at the centre of the throne, encircled by the four living creatures and the elders. The lamb had seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. He went and took the scroll from the right hand of him who sat on the throne. And when he had taken it, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb. Each one had a harp, and they were holding golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of God's people. And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, because you were slain, and with your blood you purchased for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God, and they will reign on the earth. Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels, numbering thousands upon thousands and ten thousand times ten thousand. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. In a loud voice they were saying, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honour and glory and praise. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them saying, To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praise and honour and glory and power for ever and ever. The four living creatures said, Amen, and the elders fell down and worshipped. <laughs> 